What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner and today I'm going to be making a video about how you should scale and how you should be able to scale profitably past $10,000 a month revenue for your Shopify store. Now I think personally that scaling from 0 to 10k a month is really a very very different process um, than scaling from 10k to higher 5 figures or even 6 figures a month. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you ways that you can retain and increase profitability when you're scaling to these larger numbers. Let's go ahead and hop right into the value. Alright, so if you guys remember last video, I gave away a consulting call and really quickly, I'm just going to pick the winner of that. So I put all the names of people who commented in a random generator and the winner is Omar Khalil. So just DM me on Instagram and we can get that call set up. Okay, so getting back into the video, we're gonna be talking about and going over really three of the biggest parts um, that are going to make or break you when scaling. So one of the things that I wanna say before we get into it is like one of the things that I didn't realize when I was kind of starting out, uh, which made me afraid to scale was that your profit is going to decrease once you scale to like over a thousand dollars a day or something like that and um you just have to accept that and you have to do all that you can in order to get your profit as high as possible but um you just have to accept that once you scale to a certain point you're not going to have the good profit margins that you had when you were first starting out doing three four hundred dollar days so the first part of this presentation is going to be your ad optimization and there's a a really big reason why this is first um, because having a good video ad is going to make all the difference like I've said this before but for my biggest winning product ever which has done like probably over three hundred thousand dollars in sales to this day um, it wasn't that great of a product until I found a spectacular ad for it and that ad brought me from like a maybe like two three hundred dollar a day to like you know, two, three thousand dollars a day at certain points. Um, so to find that winning ad, I tested like five to ten other ones, and now at this point, I've tested like over thirty different ads for it. And I mean, I found ads that do very, very well, and those have also allowed me to scale because even if you do find a really good ad, like eventually it's going to die out. So testing tons and tons of different ads um, is really going to make all the difference. So another thing is testing different scroll stoppers. And this is really, really big as well um, because you can use the same video, but you can change the first like three to five seconds and it's gonna hook people that have already seen that ad and normally wouldn't watch it again. Um, so I actually did this with the ad that I was talking about. Like I said, it kind of got a little saturated. Um, so I tested different scroll stoppers and I found the one that worked very well. And I was able to rescale that ad doing thousands of dollars a day. Now there's other elements of your ad that you need to test and I'm just going to go over those really quickly. Um, I would definitely test different thumbnails and um, one of the things that I would do is I would recommend you like customize your own thumbnails like don't use the Facebook ones. Um, you need to make your own and while you can use like a screenshot from the video ad I would also recommend like kind of making your own. For example if you had like a face mask that you were selling, I would recommend doing like, I don't know, like maybe someone who has really good skin and focusing in really quickly or really like closely on them and like putting some emojis and some arrows to point to their great skin. Like obviously that's just an example, but if you have like a really professional thumbnail that kind of like is, I don't want to say clickbaity, but it like draws people's attention. Um, then that's really going to make a difference. In addition, like clickbait can work um, if it has something to do with your product, but if it doesn't have something to do with your product, then I wouldn't really push it. Also, you need to test different ad copies and I would recommend testing different like formats for these ad copies, seeing if you know you wanna do bullet points on your ad copy or if you wanna like do really short or if you want to be salesy or if you want to be relatable you know there's all different angles that you can test and I would definitely recommend that you do that so that you can find the right one 
your ad copy is actually a really big deal. And um, finding a good one has like decreased my CPR by like 30% on certain products. In addition, you should test different durations and captions. And I said, like I said here, sometimes less is more. Like I, I normally do about 30 to 30, well, 30 to 40 second videos normally. Um, and that's really all you need. Unless you have a super complicated product, then like 30 to 40 seconds to show your product and to explain quickly like some information about it is like, that's all you need. And you don't need to explain a ton of stuff about it. Like you just need to explain the main selling points. Also, you should definitely test different clips inside of your ads. And I would honestly recommend that if you have a, a winner or a potential winner, that you record some of your own clips. Because if people like see the same clips over and over again, uh, there's a bunch of negative things that can happen with that. One of those being, um, you know, people aren't gonna react well to it. They're just going to like keep scrolling because they've already seen it before. Um, another thing that can happen is you can obviously get like copyright issues and stuff like that. And then a third thing that can happen is if there's one business that's using those clips that you are, um, that isn't really doing good things with them, like they're scamming their customers or they're taking 50 days to deliver a product or something like that. Um, that's definitely not something that you want to reflect on your company and people are going to think you're the same company. It's happened to me and it's probably going to happen to you if you have some bad competitors. Uh, like I said here, you can also hire someone to record clips for you if you don't want to do it yourself. Um, there's plenty of people on Fiverr that you can hire to just record pictures or videos of them using your product and um, it's really not that expensive. So another thing is testing different music. Now, um, this may not seem like a big deal, but it really is like having a good ad and good music that flows with the ad and like, you know, it draws people in. Music can do a lot of really good things for you. And um, one of the things I put here, this can be big with engagement. Um, personally, I get tons of people commenting on my posts and asking what the song is. And in all honesty, I don't reply to them. Uh, just because I want more people to keep asking because what Facebook sees is they see a bunch of people commenting on my posts, which means a bunch of people are interested in my posts, which means I get lower CPMs. The last thing that I think you should test is different types of sales. I would recommend testing free plus shipping if it's a lower ticket product, uh, like 50, 60% off, 75% uh, off, buy one, get one free, um, you could also work like free shipping into that. Um, there's a whole bunch of different angles that you can do for your sales and that does make a big difference. So I recommend that you test multiple of those. Okay, so the next section that we're gonna talk about is product page optimization. Honestly, I wasn't really gonna put this in here because I don't really think that it's like, um, you know, it's part of scaling to 10K plus a month. Like I really think that I mean, obviously it is, but I really think that this is something that you should constantly be evolving from the second that you launch a product, especially if you see like, if you see you're getting tons of website visitors, but not a lot of purchases, then um, you should obviously keep testing stuff with your product page. But um, I did put it in here, so we're gonna go over it. So the goal I would say is to make $1 per visitor. Now, obviously that's not gonna determine your profitability, but um, that's really a good baseline um, that you should have in order to ensure that you're getting like, um, like, you know, a good conversion rate for your product. Because, you know, if you're selling a $100 product, you're not gonna have the same conversion rate as if you're selling a $10 product. However, um, the value per visitor, which is $1, um, should be what you should aim for, regardless of the price of your products. So you should definitely test different prices. Um, you would be surprised like the difference that $5 can make for your conversion rate. And that's going to make all the difference if you're getting like, you know, a thousand purchases a month. In addition, you should test different descriptions. Like I said earlier, sometimes less is more. Um, I hate, hate when I go on Shopify stores and they're selling like the simplest product, like a watermelon scooper yet their description has like 10 different gifts in it and like 
it's like a novel. I mean, no, I don't want to read that. No one else wants to read that, especially for a cheap product that's not super complicated. So definitely test different descriptions. And I would recommend keeping all of those pretty short and pretty sweet. In addition, test different GIFs, pictures, and videos in your description. Um, normally I'm putting GIFs in there, but occasionally I will also put YouTube videos in my descriptions. All right, so I'd also recommend that you test different pictures. Now this is really big in my opinion because pictures are like the first thing that someone sees when they go on your product page. And if your pictures suck, they're probably just gonna leave right there. Like people are so visual nowadays and they want like that instant, like, I don't know if it's gratification is the word, but like they want to understand something like immediately because um, you know, people are just like trained that way from looking at their phones all day. So um, I would definitely test, like try to get the best quality pictures if you, as you can. Um, I recommend doing white background photos. If you, if, like, if at all possible, do white background photos. And then if you have like text in your images, then like make sure that all of your images use the same font and the same size text and just make it look like really, really professional. And then the last thing that you should do if you have a winning product is consider branding your store around the product or making a niche store. Now, when I say branding your store around the product, I'm not necessarily saying start a one product store because honestly, I don't really recommend those. Like, not that they're not good, but you're missing out on a lot of value by eliminating upsells. Um, so I would recommend that you start a niche store or kind of like a branded store around the product, meaning you it's like focused on that one winning product, but you also have like three or four or five like complementary products as well. All right, so the next section that we're gonna talk about is your average order value. This is really the biggest reason that I made this video um, because it makes the biggest difference when you're scaling past 10K a month. So, I just wrote up this little example for you. This is kind of something that I learned from Alex Becker. Some of you may know him, but um, he basically says that the person who can pay the most on the front end is the person that is going to win. So we're gonna just like go over this little example quickly. So company one is selling this face mask. It's great. They make $9 profit on every single sale. That means when they go and advertise on Facebook ads, they can pay $9 to get someone to buy it from them. And that's that. And then company two sells the exact same face mask with the exact same margins, but they also have sweet upsell, which 10% of customers purchase, um, meaning they get 10% of customers purchasing a second face mask. Um, and then they like email their customers about like related products after they check out. One of those is like an acne scar remover and 10% of customers buy that. That's not a like dollar profit per person. Then they send them this email about a blackhead remover that they recommend and 10% of their customers buy that. That's another $2. And then after sending them emails providing value and skincare tips, they also sell them on this face slimming mask that 10% of customers purchase. That's another $1.5 per person. Then after providing massive value through their email sequences, teaching customers an entire skincare routine, they upsell them on the skincare subscription box, which they make $15 profit on a month. And 5% of customers subscribe to that for a year. That's $9 per person per year. That adds up to $23.40 per purchase, meaning that one company can pay $9 on Facebook to sell a face mask, but the other company can pay $23.40 on Facebook to sell a face mask because they're not just selling a face mask. And once people buy from you once, they're so much more inclined to buy from you again. Company two understands that and company one does not. At the end of the day, company two is going to win. So how do you increase your average order value? Now, there's a lot of ways that you can do this, but really like we're gonna talk about the Shopify apps that are gonna allow you to do this. So one of these is Sweet Upsell. I mentioned this earlier and this is like, it's really big for me. Um, it costs 
I want to say $20 a month. Um, and it's, it's really, really great. I'm pretty sure I mentioned this last video, but basically they have a feature where if someone buys like a face mask from you right after they check out, it's going to say you've unlocked a special discount to get another face mask for 50% off. Now you can change that discount. I do 40% personally because my profit margins like aren't high enough to do 50, but either way or not, you're still getting a ton of people that buy a second product from you. And then you can also upsell people on complete collections. So let's say someone bought a face mask and you're like, hey, here's three other face masks and a moisturizer and like a acne remover tool or something like that, you know, like, you can upsell people on multiple products and not just the product that they purchased. So like I said, this is super effective. The only thing is it's not on the Shopify app store. So um, you can use the link in the description of this video if you would like to download Sweet Upsell. Another app that I use to increase my average order value is called Discounted Pricing by Booster Apps. And basically, I'm sure all of you have seen this, but it's basically like a little table that goes on your product page and it says buy more, save more. And then it has like the minimum like number of products that someone can buy and then the discount that goes along with it. Like for example, if someone buys two products, they get 10% off their order. If they buy three products, they get 15% off their order. And that really encourages people to buy more, especially if it's a product that like people would need multiple of. And then I really only use this for products that are like $20 or under. Uh, just because you're gonna get very few people that are, like are willing to buy a product again or buy three or four or five products if it's like more expensive than that. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is email marketing. Company two in the last example used a lot of email marketing and they informed their customers and provided value before selling to them again, which is what good email marketers do. So some of the things that I do is include discounts in my receipts, meaning whenever someone checks out on my like website, they're gonna say, hey, thank you for your purchase. Here's 20% off. Come back on our website and buy more, you know? Um, and then I also follow up with purchasers with recommended products. Um, now I only have these set up for my winning products, but I'll say, hey, thanks for buying a face mask. Um, here's how you can use that best. And by the way, here's three products that go along very well with a face mask. And then you should also have very, very good abandoned cart sequences. This isn't really like, it doesn't really have to do with average order value, but like that's a given. Like you're losing so, so much money if you don't have good abandoned cart sequences. And then the last thing that you really need is a strong welcome series sequence. And basically that just means whenever someone new gives you their email, um, you're going to walk them through like a series of emails that says, Hey, welcome to the family. Um, here's what we're about. And then throughout like that sequence, you're going to teach them more about your company and then more about like the niche that you're in and provide value in that niche. And in addition, you're going to sell to them certain products and certain discounts. One app that I haven't tested with a bunch, but I have a little bit is Candy Rack. Now, uh, like I said, it's not something I use often, but um, it's a different kind of upsell app than Sweet Upsell. And it's basically going to allow you to upsell people um, before they purchase, like right after they add a product to their cart or when they're checking out. Another way to increase your average order value is to use custom audiences to sell complimentary products with Facebook ads. So um, basically that's pretty self-explanatory, but you can just create a custom audience of all the people that have bought your product in the last like, I would say like 30 days or so. And um, you can say, hey, thanks for buying that. You know, here's a couple more products that you may like. It's super basic and it's really effective because like I said, once people buy from you once, they're really, really way more inclined to buy from you again. And then another thing that I do with a lot of my winning products is I add like an upgraded variant version for it. So um, your product may not allow you to do this, but um, if you do have a product that you can like get a better version of, um, then this may be a really good idea because even if you only charge like five or $10 extra, there's gonna be plenty of people that are willing to pay that for like the best version that they can get. 
Um, so if you're making more profit on that, then I would definitely recommend testing it. And then the last thing is retargeting the right way. Now, this doesn't really have to do with the average order value, but like retargeting is so, so big. And if you are gonna be scaling past 10K a month, then it's like super, super necessary that you have good retargeting in place. So the last thing that we're gonna be talking about is profit optimization. Now, like it says here, increasing your average order value is like one of the best ways to increase your profit per sale. Um, but if you can like decrease your advertising costs or your product costs, then like, that's obviously going to make a really big difference. So I would recommend that you negotiate with your AliExpress suppliers once you're doing like five orders a day. That may not sound like a lot, but honestly, you really don't even need five. Like I've negotiated with suppliers before I'm, I've gotten any like orders. Um, I don't say that obviously, but still like negotiate with your AliExpress suppliers. They want your business and they will like decrease their prices um, to get it. A lot of them will at least. One thing I will say though, is if you have been ordering from a certain supplier and you are doing like, you know, 10, 15 orders a day or more, then they're gonna be more inclined to decrease their price like a greater amount than if you weren't previously ordering from them. Another way to save on product costs is to find an agent. And that's something I would recommend you do at like 20 orders or more per day. Now, a fulfillment agent is basically like a company in China that orders products directly from factories and then they ship it out themselves. And um, you have a big advantage over AliExpress because these agents normally have like seven to 14 day shipping. Um, you also, they don't, most agents at least charge like a flat fee. They'll be like all orders to the United States are, you know, $10 and all orders to the, like every other country are $11 or they'll just give you one flat fee for the entire world. Either way or not, you're not going to have to deal with taxes or shipping costs for like certain countries um, like you have to with AliExpress. I know with AliExpress, you'll have an order from like, like a weird country, like, I don't know, Norway, no offense to all the Norwegians out there, but it'll be like six or seven or eight dollars to ship. And even if you look at other suppliers, those are still expensive too. And having a flat fee is really going to save you a lot, a lot of money. So I would definitely recommend that you get an agent once you're doing about 20 orders or more per day. So a couple ways to decrease your advertising costs is like I was saying earlier, having a good and engaging ad um, that's relevant to your audience is really going to make a huge difference. So we talked about that a lot in part one. And then another way is having really good story ads because story ads, um, Instagram story ads, at least for me, have the cheapest CPM of any other placement. Some of my story ads actually get under a $1 CPM for tier one countries, which is incredible. Um, but my CPMs are really low as it is, at least for most of my stores. Uh, my CPMs are generally two to $5. Um, but having like CPMs that are at least half of that or even more um, can really, really help you out with scaling. So definitely try out some story ads, especially if you have like a younger audience. Another thing that a lot of people say to do to decrease your CPMs that honestly I don't do, but I'm going to tell you to do is reply to comments with two to three sentence replies. Now, uh, you'll see a lot of people do this, especially with Facebook and um, whenever someone comments on your ad, just be like, hey, Chanel, thanks for your interest. Um, if you would like, you can get this product here. And obviously, if they have a question or something, then you answer it then. And um, I guess Facebook likes to see this because, you know, it makes it look like you care about your customers. Um, so they'll reward you with lower CPMs. So another thing that I do do is um, posting to my social media. I post on Instagram every single day on most stores that I have. And then um, for at least one of my stores, I connect it like with my Facebook account. And then um, when I'm posting, like if you're posting from Instagram, you can just scroll down and then click the little Facebook button. And then it's gonna post your both your Facebook and your Instagram at the same time. So this is a lot easier and it's going to look good. A, when people go on your webs, or sorry, when people like see your ad and they go on your Facebook page, it's going to look good that you have a lot of posts there. 
And then in addition, I know this decreases your CPMs because you know Facebook likes to see that you're active. And then the last way to decrease your advertising costs is making sure that your satisfaction scores are good. Now, some of you may not know what this is, it's kind of new, but um, Facebook has like a satisfaction score now for all like um, pages that are advertising on Facebook. And um, I'm pretty sure this ranges from two to five. So if you get, well, it ranges from zero to five, but two to five is like where you don't have decreased CPMs. I'm not sure if it makes a difference if you had a two or if you had a five in what your CPMs are. However, I do know that if you go below a two, you're gonna have really, really low CPMs. And if you go, sorry, really, really high CPMs. And if you go below a one, then you're not gonna be allowed to advertise on Facebook until your score goes like above one again. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully this was able to give you a lot of insight on how you can increase your profit margins, whether you're doing over 10K a month or whether you want to do over 10K a month. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button below and I'll see you in the next one.